the holidays and you know maybe when the wind jammers are starting to come out and so we're a real economic driver for the community uh, the hotels are filled restaurants are filled there's concerts that happen, there's bars that are holding special things. I have to have this weight of debt hanging over my shoulder. It's so nice to be able to not have to worry about that burden. So yeah, set you up for success. Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Northern Light Health, encouraging Mainers to ask themselves, how are you? Really? Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you? Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. Deadriver.com. Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. From the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland, it's the MPA Boys Class AA State Championship, presented by Ware Butler between the Wyndham Eagles and the Gorham Rams. Welcome inside the Cross Insurance Arena. We have got a great way to end the basketball season here tonight. I'm Rob Kennedy, along with Brandon Terrell, and this game really has it all. Two top seeds in the North and the South. Two teams with 18 and two records coming in. Two rivals separated just by a border. Their neighboring towns. And two head coaches that go back a long way as good friends. And two outstanding teams. We have some fun here tonight. Yeah. How about this, Rob? We have neighboring towns right next door to each each other. You have coaches who have known each other since their college days. Not a lot separating these two teams geographically or on the basketball court. Take a look at the Gorham Rams, 18 and two on the season. They have really elevated in the last couple of years. Seven wins two years ago 13 last year Ryan DeShane comes over from Grey New Gloucester and they're playing for a gold ball yeah first double a gold ball appearance here for the Gorham Rams you talk about Gorham you have to talk about Ashton LeClaire Mr. Maine basketball semifinalist McDonald's all-star averaging over 21 points per game very good team too they knocked off Deering in the semifinals Defeated Scarborough 46-33 in the regional finals. Ready to go against their cross-border rival, the Wyndham Eagles. Ryan DeShane is standing by with Greg Levinsky. We'll send it down to the floor. Coach, I feel like we've talked about this before, but such an interesting situation with a veteran group of guys, but then you're a first-year coach. Obviously not a first-year coach ever, but first year at Gorham. What's it been like on this run so far? Yeah, it's been amazing. These guys have bought in. They you know, really adapt to the way we want to play on both sides of the ball, and it's just been a dream season. And 32 minutes to go. The score against Wyndham in the regular season was not super close, but I'm sure they're a different team from then. What did you prepare for in terms of facing them tonight? Well, the first half, they're up one. So 16 minutes, they're right there with us. And, you know, we just went on one of our runs that we, you know, we, we had the capability to do. We definitely made some adjustments this time, how we'll guard them and how we want to play offensively. If the pace is in our favor, we like our chances. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Greg. Let's talk about the Wyndham Eagles right now, a team that took down Portland 43-34 in the regional finals. Started slow in that game, scored 13 points through the first two minutes of the third quarter. They were down a dozen, battled through it, ended the game in a 30-9 run to be here tonight. Yeah, that's indicative of, of their entire season, Rob. Nobody expected much out of these Wyndham Eagles heading into this one. They weren't kind of dubbed as that championship team heading into this one, and they've just used that as fuel to prove everybody wrong. They're a very balanced team. They're led in scoring by Blake McFee. Pearson and Tyree James at 16.5 and 14 points per game. But Quinton Lindsay led the conference in assists. Crady Dixon led in rebounds, and Eric Bowen was the defensive player of the year. Greg Levinsky's made his way down to Chad Polkett and the Wyndham coach, but send it down to the floor. Coach, it's been an incredible run for your team, a team that won five games last year, tripled that already this year. What did you say about the growth about these guys this year? Uh, they just stuck together. I mean, uh, it's been the same story for us all year, sticking together, uh, making sure that, you know, uh, when adversity hits, we stay together on, in those moments. Um, incredibly hardworking group of kids, uh, great kids. Um, they deserve to be here. They've worked their, their butts off to be here, so we're excited. You saw Gorham once. What did you learn from that matchup? Uh, a lot, really. Uh, I mean, they're a great team, um, super powerful. They were, you know, they're supposed to be here. Um, they've done a great job getting here, and um, we got to make some adjustments to beat them. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Greg. And again, this 
Interesting night, too, with Wyndham playing for their first ever gold ball. They won their first regionals last week. It's the first time they've gotten this far. For Gorham, they haven't played for a gold ball since 2005 when they lost by three to Camden Hills. Their last win was in 2000, a 74-52 victory over Herman. Take a look at that. Florals, take a look at the road to the gold. For the Gorham Rams, coming in, the regular season record 16-2, and two, averaging over 64 points per game. That's uh, good for first place in Class AA this season, giving up just over 50. The number one seed in the South defeated Deering and Scarborough to get here. That last gold ball was in Class B over Herman. They haven't won a Class AA gold ball yet. Over on the other side, Wyndham hasn't won any gold ball of any kind. They're here for the first time, an all-new experience. They averaged almost 60 points per game and gave up just under 50 a game. They beat Lewiston and Portland, and here they both are. Just about time to be introduced to these two teams, and we'll send things down to our floor announcer, pick up the house mic, and meet the Eagles and the Rams here in Portland as they get set to play for a Class AA gold ball. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cross Insurance Arena, our host for tonight's Main Principals Association 2024 Class AA Boys State Championship game. Tonight's contest features the Class A South, Class AA South champions, the Gorham High School Rams. Their opponents tonight are the Class AA North champions, Wyndham High School Eagles. Good sportsmanship is the result of a disciplined effort to respect yourself, your opponents, and game officials. Remember, good sports are winners, so be a sport and practice good sportsmanship. The officials for tonight's contest are Mr. Jeff Mertzel, Mr. Rob Lamar, and Mr. Patrick Henry. Our official scorekeeper is Ellen Durgan. Our spotter is John Hodge. Scoreboard operator is Tyler Berthume. Our clock operator is Paul Marquis. Our musical director is Jacob Hodgkin. And our on-site on certified athletic trainer caring for the athletes this evening is Anne-Marie Bouchard. Now let's meet the team members and we'll begin with the visitors from Gorham High School. Number zero, sophomore Atticus Witten. Number two, freshman, Colton Jewett. Number 11, senior, Isaac Young. Number 25, senior, Jesse James. Number 31, senior, Hayden Pelletier. Number 33, senior, Taylor Farr. And number 40, freshman, Preston Brown. And now the team members from Wyndham High School. Number two, sophomore, Tyree James. Number three, junior, Joseph Bly. Number five, junior, Connor Janvrin. Number 10, junior, Grant Copey. Number 14, freshman, Colin Janvrin. Number 20, senior, Ryan Smythe. Number 21, Junior Brayson Freeze. Number 22, Senior Noah Maines. Number 24, Senior Benny Ninziza. And number 33, Senior Matthew Searway. Now the starting lineups for tonight's matchup. From Gorham High School, number 14, senior guard, Gabe Mishu. <laughs> In 
And from Wyndham High School, number one, sophomore guard, Adrian Moody. From Gorham, number 22, senior guard, Caden Smith. And from Wyndham, number 12, senior forward, Blake McPherson. From Gorham, number 23, junior forward, Jack Carlonis. And from Wyndham, number 13, senior forward, Quinton Lindsay. From Gorham, number 35, senior guard, Ashton LeClaire. And from Wyndham, number 15, senior guard, Eric Bowen. From Gorham High School, number 45, junior center, Griffin Gammon. From Wyndham High School, number 30, junior guard, Crady Dixon. Gorham High School is coached by Ryan DeShane, assisted by Greg Morton, Chris Crosby, Russ Willett, and the student managers are Caleb Reed and Lucas Willett. Wyndham High School is coached by Chad Polkinen, assisted by George McCrillis, Jeff Grigsby, Noah Esty, and student manager Paolo Ventura. Well, there you go, the starting lineups and the two teams, the Eagles and the Rams. And this place is almost full. Brandon, you said it pretty well. When the ends of the Civic Center get full for a state championship game, you know you have a crowd on hand, and the ends are pretty much entirely full. It's packed in here. You can feel the energy in the arena. Two rivals going at it here for a state championship. Griffin Gammon's wearing black with the Gorham Rams. He's set to jump against Blake McPherson. Wyndham's wearing white. Let's get set to go. It's only the fourth time these two teams have met in the postseason, first time since 2009 and never after the quarterfinals. A huge night in store here in Maine's largest city. Jeff Burtzel's got the ball in the air. We're underway. Wyndham McGorham with the basketball, excuse me. LeClaire passed that out and gave Misho stopping his way to the hole. We have our first foul. Yeah, first possession, first foul, blocking foul on Wyndham. Going to be baseline inbound. See here on the replay. A little aggressive, cutting off the dribble drive. Issue and mounting the basketball. We'll get a chance to do it again as Blake McPherson knocks that away. Eric Bowen called for that first foul. He was the recipient of the Gary Randall Award given out by the SMAA for a player who shows character, sportsmanship, and leadership. Tip of the cap to Eric. Ashton LeClaire. Tough shot by LeClaire, but he hits those. Not that time. Blake McPherson grabs the rebound. Here's Quentin Lindsay. Quick pass ahead to Bowen. A finger roll, and Wyndham's on the board. Left hand on the fast break. Got it. Mishu. Trying to penetrate. Did so. Shot won't count. A foul call before the shot. That's the second foul called against the Eagles. See on the replay, Crady Dixon trying to play on ball defense. And again, a little aggressive, with blocking foul. Two on Wyndham in the early going. LeClaire off the back iron. Great fight for the rebound. Griffin Gammon has it. It's a jump ball on the arrow points for the Wyndham Eagles. It's a madhouse in here right now, Rob. This feels like the main event. It really does. Every whistle. This is an explosion in the crowd. You see the battle underneath the boards for the rebound. Results in the jump ball going to Wyndham. They have every element. Two rivals, neighboring towns, teams that haven't won in one case ever, and the second case for a long time. They're getting after it here. Student sections have come alive as well. A.J. Moody. Eric Bowen outside. 
Brady Dixon trying to take it in. Got fouled. They'll get Jack Carlonas for that. Dixon will head to the line. Good strong dribble drive to the hoop here by Crady Dixon. Dips the shoulder, picks up contact. He'll go to the strike for a pair. Dixon was the SMAA North rebound leader. Had 12 points in the regular season contest against the Rams. And he hits the first one. Listed as a guard. Fairly impressive for a guard to lead the conference in rebounding. Right. In a both, it's a 4-0 Eagles lead. Gabe Mishu. She's trying to work on Blake McPherson. That turnover gives it right back to the Eagles. Three-second violation. Yep, I believe so. Couldn't see through the forest of players down by the bucket. That's where the whistle came from. Here's a three on the way. It's off the iron. Dixon the rebound. There's two more. Right place, right time. Brady Dixon, he's got a quick four. Ashton LeClaire. Now it's Gabe Mishu. Player control foul. A.J. Moody takes the charge. See him step in and get set up. He's okay on the shot, but after the shot, the follow through. I don't know if it's the Gorham fans booing or the Wyndham fans saying Moody as he drew the foul. Quentin Lindsay. They dared Bowen to take the shot. He'll try to penetrate on Griffin Gammon. Dixon heads inside. Lindsay, three! It's a nine point lead out of the gate for Wyndham. This is not going to be like the regular season game when Wyndham lost by 27 to Gorham, 67 40. You heard Ryan DeShane say it. They're a different team, and so far, unfortunately for him, they've proven him right here in the early going. Listen to it in here, Rob. You see Lindsay get his puppies in order and knock down the tray ball. That you knew was going in the minute it left, putting Lindsay's hands. Gorham needs a TO to get organized here. Quick 9 0 run for Wyndham. Been impressed with Wyndham. Coach Chad Polkinen and the sense of purpose that this team plays with. Really tremendous. Coach Polkinen talked about be where your feet are. Stay present, be in the moment, control what we can control. See, so far, over the first two minutes, they're controlling everything. Remember, though, the Rams have been in this situation before. They started slowly against Deering. Same thing with Scarborough. In both games, they got hot and pulled away. Now they've got a hole to dig out of here early on. This shoot. Good three-point shooter. Eagles have not given him a sniff from behind the arc so far. Jack Carlonis. There's LeClaire for three. It clanged off the iron. Nice tip back outside to give the Rams a second chance. Aiden Smith. Mishu. He carried it. And right there in the middle of things as well, Eric Bowen defensively. And this Wyndham defense just putting the clamps on Gorham here over the first two and a half minutes. Gorham just finding it so hard to execute their offense, to dribble drive. Credit Wyndham. Lindsay Roll that down on the baseline. Blake McPherson into the corner for three. That won't fall. And skying for the rebound, Caden Smith. Here come the Rams. A player back outside. Three on the way. Smith! Bullseye! Caden Smith stepped into that one on the trail. Splash. And the Rams needed that. Lindsay. Great pass, hits the cutting, Dixon! He's got the end one coming. What a play, what a bounce pass, what a finish. The replay set up, nice bounce pass by Lindsay, and the oh. finish, hello. On the, turn one. on the tournament highlight reel, that's gonna go up high in the list. Great pass, a better bucket by Dixon, and he's at the line to try to give Wyndham a nine point lead. And restore that advantage. Brady Dixon, six points early on here. Make it seven.
Jackson up in the front court. He'll move back now as the Rams inbound the basketball. It's an almost perfect start for the Eagles. Up by nine points. Caden Smith just hit that three. Atticus Witten in the game now. He wears number zero, the sophomore. Strong player off the bench. Mishu and rolled out. McPherson yanked down the rebound. Here's Lindsay. That bounce pass underneath. Saved out of bounds. Great play by the Rams and gave Mishu. And a pass intercepted to turn back over. And the end result, two points for Gorham. Griffin Gammon lost it. Cut it back, finished. At 10 points in the finals, win over Scarborough. Eight points last time against the Eagles. Tyree James in the game, too. He's out there, number two, wearing whites. Lindsey got his man in the air, and he'll get himself to the line. Atticus Whitten just came in. He'll pick up the foul. Great efficiency offensively in this first quarter for the Wyndham Eagles. See Quentin Lindsey get inside the paint, jump stop. Pick up contact, almost got another in one. Lindsay doesn't score a ton of points. He's around five or six. He averaged 7.7 .7 on the season. He's an assist man overall, and he got one more chance at the line. Came to the first team, Double A North All Stars. Quentin Lindsay led the SMAA in assists. He has a tremendous distributor. One out of two at the line. It's an eight-point Wyndham lead. Mishu handing to Caden Smith. Smith, quick first step, and it's stripped. And he was the last to touch it. Smith registers an ejection, but it's been overruled, and it's Eagles basketball. Really impressed with this Wyndham defense so far in the first quarter. Gorham's the highest scoring team in Class AA, 64 per game. Tyree James almost lost that to LeClaire. James, a very impressive sophomore, 11.4 points, and he's come off the bench here today. Lindsey back outside. Here's a three on the way. A.J. Moody's on target. Nothing but the bottom of the net. A.J. Moody, splash. The lead is 11. LeClaire, work it down low. The shot won't fall on the first attempt, but Gabe Mishu will head to the line to shoot. McClare nifty bounce pass along the baseline. Gabe Mishu, he'll go to the strike for two. Three fouls now on Wyndham. Toro's been called for four. Wyndham fans making plenty of noise. You can see him to the left of your screen. Mishu will get another chance. I gotta turn my headphones up, Rob. I can barely hear you. This is about as loud as I remember this cross insurance arena. Both the two at the line. That will end up out of bounds. Good play to spike that off an Eagles player. The Rams will keep it. And there's Ryan DeShane. First year coach in the big one. Caden Smith stripped. And that'll go right back to Wyndham. Another turnover in the ledger as Wyndham defense continues. Keep the clamps on. Just lost it. Off his own foot there. A.J. Moody just jumped out of the way to make sure the ball didn't hit him. Tyree James. Lindsay isolated. Tries to work on Atticus Witten. Lindsay spins, scoops, no. And the rebound, Caden Smith. He got fouled on the way down. A little frustration foul there by Lindsay. See it all the time. Miss a makeable shot. Okay, Lindsay, tough shot, but makeable. And fouls in the rebounding action. Is that Lindsay? No, no. It is Tyree James. Atticus Witten. LeClaire stops, a little short, not falling for him so far. Brady Dixon had a great first quarter. Kicked outside to Moody. A.J. Moody's hit one three, this time he'll accelerate into the paints, kissed off the glass, won't fall, Smith the rebound. 
The shoe back quickly for Gorham. Into the corner, three on the way for Witten, too strong. And the rebound grabbed down by James, who's on the run. Tyree James forced outside by Caden Smith, and a foul call. And Smith has to be careful with his reaction there to the foul call. Gorham a little frustrated, stuck on five here in the first quarter. Wyndham already, 11-point advantage opened up here. And that's the fifth foul on the Rams, so Tyree James is at the line, a good free throw shooter, 71.4% in the regular season. He had 10 points from the line in the win over Portland. Of his 12 points, 10 came from the charity strike. That's some clutch shooting in a regional final. And he's on target. The lead is a dozen. Tyree James was named to the AA North All-Rookie Team. All kinds of accolades for these Wyndham Eagles to the postseason awards. Matthew Searway, 6'1", senior number 33, in for the first time for the Eagles as James hits them both. What a weapon to have him coming off the bench. An incredible sixth man. Issue. Tyree James stuck to him. Griffin Gammon back outside. Smith for three, too strong. Moody with the basket catch and the rebound. Offensive woes continue for the Rams. That leads a Baker's dozen for the Eagles. They're up 13. A.J. Moody to James in the corner. Dixon outside, resets. Heading down for the last 90 seconds of this first quarter. Controlled entirely by the Eagles. Lindsey trying to work his way into the paint. And it's stripped, but he recovered. They have to open for three, and they'll pay for that. Quentin Lindsey, dead eye from outside. He's got eight here in the first quarter. Mishu. A foul called as Mishu headed into the paint. That's a shooting situation now for the Gorham Rams. Fifth foul on the Eagles. The cat in the hat is here tonight in the Wyndham student section. Look at the creativity some of the students come up with as far as uh, what they wear to these games. Gave okay, issue missed two earlier here in the first quarter. Looks to knock these ones down. The senior continues to be snake bit. Nothing more frustrating than coming very close on those shots, just watching them hit the rim, rattle around, and bounce out, or roll out in that last situation. Here's a swish. One for four at the line, he gets off to Schneid. About to enter the last minute of play in the first quarter. Tyree James, watched closely by LeClaire. Two good athletic players with plenty of speed. James, a little more speed that time, took it in and scores. Oh, Tyree. So tough. 42 seconds remaining. Player control foul drawn. Look at Eric Bowen. Look at his teammates around him. Pick him up. It's a team that really pulls for each other, you can tell. What intensity here in the first quarter Wyndham is playing with. 23 points for the Eagles in the first quarter. 42.1 seconds left. They have the basketball. Chance to score some more. The arrow is pointing in the Rams' direction. Tyree James winding the clock down a bit. Down to 30 seconds. Dixon, the 6'2 junior. Griffin Gammon's patient, just watching. Now the Eagles, with 15 seconds to go, getting set to start their attack. Here they come. Dixon, the kick out. Traveling violation called on Bowen, got a little too eager. The Rams might have a chance here, four seconds if they hurry. They have the arrow, they love to score and get the ball right back. Let's see, Mishu. Slices. He'll go to the hole. After the, uh, he went to the hole. He'll go to the line. I was trying to spit out. Great job by Gabe Mishu to attack, dribble, drive, get all the way to the hole. 
get to the stripe for two. The horn sounded, so you won't see anyone going after the rebound. Just two shots for Gabe Michoud. Really big shots. Despite there being plenty of time left, the 17 point gap. Michoud hits the first. He's now hit two in a row. Chance for three. One out of two. And the first quarter ends with the Eagles scoring. 23-7. All Wyndham after one here in Maine Public Television. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... A new car? A new home? Or what about that vacation you know you deserve? Why spend more when you could spend less? MainCreditUnions.org Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981, with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student-athletes from across Maine. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. The environment is just awesome. Great campus, small, close-knit community. Everyone's really welcoming. Everything feels very personal. You feel like you belong here. Fans are into it here in Portland. If the Gorham Rams are going to win their first goal ball since 2000, they have to conjure up those comeback powers that have been so strong in the regional tournament to dig out of this 16-point hole. Gorham's got to settle down, take a deep breath. There's enough energy in this building already. Let's get into our game and just chip away. Abe Michoud taking on A.J. Moody. High off the glass, no, the rebound. There's a putback. That won't fall either for Griffin Gammon. Uh, two misses on makeable shots there for the Rams. They have really struggled to fill the bucket. Eric Bowen. Dixon back outside. There's Crady with it again. Gammon there with Dixon. And Dixon traveled. Griffin Gammon stuck with him the entire way. A couple traveling violations by Wyndham. Opening the door crack here for Gorham. Rams basketball. He can't make up the deficit in one shot. He's going to chip away. Gabe Mishu tries to do just that. There's two of it. The Mishu explode to the hole and finish with the right hand. Great body control through the gap. All the way to the basket for two. Lindsay outside. Dixon. Bowen resets. Backs up. A.J. Moody's dangerous from outside. Already hit one three. Brady Dixon will try his luck. That won't fall. And the rebound to Caden Smith. Gorham coming back quickly. The shoe outside to LeClaire. The NBA three is a little bit short. And Dixon skied for the rebound for Wyndham. LeClaire with a hand in his face. Just barely catches front rim. AJ Moody, no. There's a rebound, Brady Dixon. That won't fall. When Michoud finally back. missing a couple shots. Mishu back the other way, LeClaire. Mishu scoops and hits. There's the Gorham offense coming to life, scoring the first four points in the second quarter. And cut the 16-point deficit to a dozen. Lindsay matched up with Ashton LeClaire. Dixon taking a look. Moody cutting through the paint. Lindsay into the lane. Great incisive pass. Eric Bowen finished. Great backdoor cut by Eric Bowen along the baseline. Even better pass to find him from Lindsay. Timeout was called before the ball was inbounded by Coach Polkin into the Eagles. That's why there was a little bit of confusion. He's been trying to call timeout ever since the basket. Lindsay drives to his left. Great bounce pass through the lane here. There it is right there. Right to a cutting, Eric Bowen gets two off the glass. Threads the needle. 
Maine Principals Association builds partnerships that provide a network of resources, exemplars of leadership, and a culture of collaboration for the benefit of all school community members. For more information on how the Maine Principals Association promotes sports, scholastic achievement, and much more, check them out at mpa.cc. Rob Kennedy here with Brandon Terrell, Class AA boys. State championship, the Shepherd Stags won the girls' championship right before this one. Wyndham with a 14-point lead, trying to win their first gold ball. We saw a team earlier here at the Cross Arena win their first gold ball. It was the Brunswick Dragons, Class A girls. Gray New Gloucester won their first Class A gold ball. They had a Class C gold ball back in 1975. Gorham with a possession here out of the timeout. You have to think Coach DeShane at the quarter break said, okay, guys, Wyndham just played the best quarter they could possibly play. They can't possibly be that good in the second quarter. It's time for us to dominate a quarter. So far, they're up 4-2. Well, if they're that good for the next three quarters, they'll score 93, 92 points in this game. They dared Misho to shoot, and they'll pay for it. Gave Misho seven big ones in the second quarter, nine in the game. Lindsay. The lead's now 11. Mishu back outside. Gammon for three. Close, but no. Another rebound for Eric Bowen, the 5'10 senior, who plays much bigger. Oh, they got another good look there from three. Couldn't hit it. McPherson, a blocking foul called on Mishu. Blocking foul on the baseline drive. Going to be baseline inbounds here for the Eagles. First foul of the second quarter by either team. Brady Dixon surveying the scene. Dixon trying to drive, picked his dribble up. Almost stolen, but Bowen has it. And Bowen's got some daylight. But that shot altered by Gammon, who closed down quickly. Tried to go over the front of the rim. Just rolled off to the left. Caden Smith, back to Gabe Mishu. Smith, the senior. Excellent three-point shooter. That time for two, won't fall, and a foul called in the rebounds. They motion two shots here, but that can't be the case. Could be on the floor. You see the shot missed from inside the paint. Rebound of the foul. Oh, he, is he saying he was shooting that? Yeah. So he was putting that right back up. With a follow-up, put back, so he gets two shots here. Griffin Gammons at the line, an excellent free throw shooter, 76.7%, one of the leaders in the SMAA. The Rams are chipping away. Coach DeShane had great things to say about Griffin Gammon, called him the X-factor of this team. He can guard one through five, knock down shots, protect the rim on defense. He hits them both. Gorham's cut the lead to single digits. Eagles by nine with the basketball. Lindsay, the floor general. Lake McPherson back to Lindsay, who just kept that in bounds and almost took Coach, out Ryan DeShane over Coach there. DeShane ducks for cover there. That's rejected. Great block. And a foul call, trying to go for the basketball. Blake McPherson. In the first quarter, Rob, the other side of the Cross Insurance Arena was loud, was into it. Now the Gorham side has some things to cheer about. They're feeling it here in the second quarter. Have a foul picked up there on McPherson. Exactly halfway through this second quarter. Rams have shaved nine points off what was a 16-point gap. Issue running the floor. LeClaire stops. And a traveling violation calls. And it'll go against Caden Smith. Again, credit to that Wyndham defense. Been so tough so far here in the first half. Eagles, though, have had their offense slowed down here in the second quarter. Tyree James back outside to Moody, who resets. James. Moody into the corner. Back outside. Tyree James, the bouncer inside. Lindsey, and it's stripped. That's a held ball, and the arrow points in Wyndham's direction. 
Both of these teams so tough on the inside. You see the ball inside the paint. And there's quick hands on it there to tie it up. Griffin Gammon. Good jump ball. Stay down here. Lindsay inbounding the basketball for the Eagles. Tough spot for A.J. Moody to be in. The ball's going right back to Gorham. Another held ball. That was like walking to a Venus flytrap for A.J. Moody. See Lindsay with the inbound. Uh-oh. Tied up right there. A little extracurricular. <laughs> Those rivals want to let that ball go. These kids have been playing against each other in every sport since youth sports. Issue trying to work his way in. Here's a three on the way. It's good. The freshman, Colton Jewett. Colton Jewett in off the bench. So let me knock down this three ball real quick. And Jewett will pick up the foul, trying to defend against Quentin Lindsay. It's a six-point game. Let's take a look at that Jewett bucket. Actually, no, we'll take a look at the foul. It's a drive and kick by Lindsay. Lindsay doing a great job finding the gaps, getting inside the paint, and then distributing from there. Makes it so much harder for a defense if you have to collapse to adjust to a dribble drive. That bounced off McPherson. And it's going to be Gorham basketball. Well, it's a tale of two quarters, isn't it, Brandon? Wyndham controlled the first, and here comes Gorham in the second. So you knew a team with the bona fides that Gorham has wasn't going to go away easily. They're come back in this second quarter, and they have here. Kick out, three ball. That's straight cash. Here's an attempt. Smoke! Game, Misho. It's a three-point game. Don't look now. They're within three. You didn't think they were going away, did you? You don't know these Rams if you did. Tyree James resetting with 2.25 to go in the first half. James back outside. Dixon. James will recalculate. Shifty move to the baseline. Oh, rejected. It was a foul first. And Tyree James will go to the line. Yeah, four points for Tyree James in the first quarter. None so far in the second. The replay of that three-pointer. Oh, that's pure. So James the line trying to stop a little bit of bleeding here. 16-point Eagles lead at the end of the first quarter has been chipped down to three. And a cool, calm, collected sophomore hits another one from the line. There's Coach Polkinen. 1,000-point scorer at St. Joe's and Standish, Coach Polkinen. Five thousand people inside this arena. That doesn't bother Tyree James one bit. It's four for four from the strike. Issue is team down five. Issue's made a decisive effort here in the second quarter to get to the basket. That same spot on the right side. He's gotten there time again here in the second. This time picks up the foul call. Three fouls each way now. Eagles and Rams. Gorman bounding the basketball. Griffin Gammon. LeClaire winding his way in to score off the glass. He took on three Eagles and beat them all. Ashton LeClaire, 1,000-point scorer in his career. First two here tonight. Tyree James. Under two to go. Lindsay, tough shot. Won't fall. And a rebound down to the rookie, Colton Jewett. Really a tale of two quarters. Every shot was falling for Wyndham in the first. And there's a lid on the bucket here in the second. Gorham could tie the game in this possession. Caden Smith. That's stolen. Quinton Lindsay. He's going to wait for help. James in the corner. Great pass, but the shot won't fall for McPherson. That's the kind of thing that was happening to Gorham in the first quarter. Here's a three, Jewett, no good. And a rebound yanked down by Mishu. Too many trees underneath, and Grady Dixon has the basketball for Wyndham. Oh, it's big boy basketball under the basket here tonight. Tyree, no. And the rebound again, Griffin Gammon. Oh, this is fun. One possession game. Gorham could tie it here. Mishu. Makes it a one-point game. Issue attacking the basket. 
time after time. That time to the left. Gets back within one. Eagles look stunned. It's a 15-point advantage for the Gorham Rams here in the second quarter. Wyndham playing for last shot. They have the ball, a one-point lead in the possession arrow. Quentin Lindsay directing traffic. Right now, it's a red light. No one's moving. James, nine to work with. Lindsay sets the screen. They pick him up. James slices. No good. And a rebound grabbed down. The heave is well wide and wow. What a first half. You thought, I need a drink of water. You thought Wyndham might run away with it, but the Gorham Rams have come rolling back. It's a one-point game at halftime in Portland. Class AA State Championship in Maine Public Television. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Having free college, it's awesome. I'm not going to have to have this weight of debt hanging over my shoulder. It's so nice to be able to not have to worry about that burden. So yeah, it sets you up for success. Five County Credit Union, serving members since 1956, committed to delivering convenience through technology, branch access, and local service. Sheridan Construction, a main company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Hammond Lumber Company, with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. Rob Kennedy and Brandon Terrell back here with you, our entire main public television crew with the Cross Arena in Portland. Going to present the Sportsmanship Award here at halftime. And that's presented by FAME, the Finance Authority of Maine. The school recognized that the Sportsmanship Award has displayed respect of coaches, players, and officials, fair play, honesty and integrity, and a true love for the game of basketball. Thank you to FAME, the Finance Authority of Maine, for helping the Maine Principals Association present the Sportsmanship Awards today. Did you know there's free money available to help pay for education and training beyond high school? Even if you're not sure what you want to do, just file the FAFSA. File now to maximize your aid. Need help? Apply at studentaid.gov and get free help from FAME at famemaine.com slash FAFSA. On behalf of the Maine Principals Association and FAME, the Finance Authority of Maine, it is an honor to present the Sportsmanship Banner in boys basketball. During the season, each basketball team in Maine was asked to select an opponent they felt was most deserving of receiving a Sportsmanship Award. The school we recognize with a Sportsmanship Award have displayed respect of coaches, players, and officials, fair play, honesty and integrity, and a true love of the basketball game. Tonight, we are pleased to recognize in boys class AA North, the Blue Devils of Lewiston High School. Here today to receive the award from the MPA and the Finance Authority of Maine are Coach Elgin Fisick and Assistant Coach Carlos Gonzalez. Along with team members Mike Click, Adam Zeninger, Abdi Rahman Dekain, Cohen Strahan, Josue Louis, Joe Samba, and Logan Spence. Congratulations to Lewiston High School. Thank you to FAME, the Finance Authority of Maine, for helping present our Sportsmanship Award today. FAME wants to remind families to file their FAFSA now to maximize their financial aid. There is free money available to help pay for education and training beyond high school. Visit famemaine.com slash FAFSA. Congratulations to the Lewiston Blue Devils for the Sportsmanship Award. They were a tough out in the Class AA North Tournament. Knocked out by the Eagles, but not easily. 57-44, that improved Blue Devils team really improved. Greg Levinsky is standing by down on the floor. We'll send it down to him. Thanks, Rob. Yes, I'm here with Pat Moody, the father of A.J. Moody, class of 94 here at Wyndham High School, and I know you're very involved in the basketball program overall. What's it been like to watch your son and this whole group grow together? Uh, it's, it's a dream. It's incredible. 
Uh, this group of kids is just so special on and off the court. They spend a lot of time together. They've been playing since youth ball, and that's another thing with, when it comes to Wyndham, the community, uh, the, the feeder program, it's just, it's, it's all there. It's an amazing package. What is it like for you to watch your son out there? I know he played last year, but the team is much more successful this year. You know, it's a dream come true. Um, my my son is uh, just doing a fantastic job and, you know, got on the varsity team last year, started, got a lot of minutes. He takes a lot of pride in his defense and, you know, it's it's it's, it's a blast. And all of them, I mean, Tyree's almost like a son and so is Eric Bowen. So, I mean, all these guys are like my kids. That's awesome. In terms of their closeness, you know, how would you describe the bond that they share, the whole team? Yeah, they uh, they are so tight knit, um, on and off the court when they're not playing. They're back at the house playing against video games against each other uh, all summer long. And even when you notice on the court, their communication is is off the charts. They're constantly talking on defense, constantly talking on offense, trying to get that edge. I don't know if people ever think of Wyndham as a basketball school, but maybe it will be because there's some young guys on the team, obviously some seniors as well. You know, does the community feel more like a basketball community with this run? Absolutely. Wyndham against everybody, you know? That's the thing. It's like nobody believed in us. We absolutely believe in us. And Wyndham is a basketball town. Like I said, one of the largest youth feeder programs in the state. Um, the community, the, the dinners that we had, a dinner after every single game, uh, sponsored by the businesses in the community, it just... It's so awesome. It is. It truly is amazing. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for uh, joining us yeah, here. Thank you. Back to you guys at the table. Thanks, Greg. And I think that's one common theme that you can speak about, Brandon Charles. You've been on a coach the gold ball winning team, and a lot of times you hear that from players, from parents, from coaches. To get this far, you got to have a team that's really close. Yeah, you hear it again and again throughout Championship Saturday is how close these teams are, and that's no coincidence. The teams that are the closest have the most success, oftentimes. And you, that's why you hear it a lot on Championship Saturday. Go to the statistics. Wyndham, 8 for 21, shooting 38%. Gorham, 39%. Right there, it's just a story of quarters. First quarter was all Wyndham. Second quarter, all Gorham. Uh, Wyndham a little better from the foul line, 89 to 50%. Turnovers are about even. A couple more for Gorham. Uh, but it's been back and forth, one quarter each. And we're one point apart here at halftime, Rob. What is it about these Gorham Rams, though? All tournament long, they get down and just come storming back. Ryan DeShane, I think, should get a scoreboard installed in the locker room and just put 15 to nothing, visitor over home, make his guys feel at home, and they can come out of the gate fired up. Yeah, it fired Gabe Mishu up in that second quarter. I know that. He went two for six from the foul line in the first quarter. And at the quarter break, he must have said, I got this, guys, because he poured in 12 points in that second quarter and attacked the basket relentlessly. Ryan DeShane's team down one point. I'm sure one of the things he's talked about in the locker room is like, we got the momentum. We've just shaved 15 points off a 16-point deficit. Let's just keep it going, boys. Yeah, Wyndham looked like a million bucks in that first quarter on both ends of the floor. They had incredible intensity and effort on defense and offensively. They just made all their shots. And, of course, things flipped in the second quarter for Gorham. So I think both coaches have a similar message at halftime, right? We, we've weathered their best punch. We've thrown a punch ourselves. Now let's settle in and play our best ball over the last 16 minutes. I use a dated reference here, but it's kind of like watching Rocky versus Apollo Creed. As yeah. One just starts punching and punching and punching. And it looks like they'll knock the other out. And... And the other comes back and does the same exact thing. The first round was uh, all Apollo Creed and Rocky won the second round, I suppose. And just going to see what happens in the second half. But they've both taken their best punches. They both absorbed their opponent's best punches, all to play for in the final 16 minutes. That's been a great job by Wyndham. I love their scoring. It's been a little more balanced. And we talked in the pregame. That's their thing. They, they are a balanced team. They spread it around. 8, 6, 6, 4, 3. And on the other side, Gabe Michoud took over. He's got 14. Ashton LeClaire just two. That's something to keep an eye on here at halftime. You mentioned the cat in the hat was here. Here he is. Dr. Seuss's birthday. I mean, that's the reason for the celebration. Well, either way, it's a great game here in Portland. A one-point battle between Wyndham and Gorham. We'll head back to the second half here in Portland on Maine Public Television right after this. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. 
Northern Light Health, encouraging Mainers to ask themselves, how are you, really? Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. The environment is just awesome. Great campus, small, close-knit community. Everyone's really welcoming. Everything feels very personal. You feel like you belong here. I think I've really learned a lot from watching High School Quiz Show. Just like the endless potential of intellect. I used to want to be on Jeopardy. I think that was like my life goal at one point. And my dreams have finally come true. So it's a bit of an emotional moment. I think we're all super thrilled to see Todd. We are big fans. <laughs> Did you miss a game or want to watch one again? Maine Public is rebroadcasting all of the state finals games this weekend. Last night's Class B games were seen this morning, but today's games begin tonight at 11 p.m. with a replay of the Class A girls. Then championship weekend picks up at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning for a full day of state final excitement, starting with the Class A boys. For the full replay schedule, head to mainepublic.org slash basketball. Wyndham with a one-point lead and the basketball. Grady Dixon standing right in front of us. Referee Jeff Mertz will hand him the basketball. We'll get set to go. The Eagles in white attack to the basket to our left. The Rams wearing black. They'll attack from left to right across your screen. Glad you're joining us wherever you're watching this game. Maine, New England, worldwide. Welcome to the Cross Arena here in Portland. This second half is set up to be a classic. Yeah, you've tuned into a good one. Don't touch that dial. Get comfortable on the couch. Grab some popcorn. It's going to be an electric last 16 minutes. I mean, don't touch that dial these days. Probably has to be, I think, reset a bit with Don't X out of this window. <laughs> That's true. If you have a dial, I'd, I'd be impressed. Brady Dixon outside. Mass McPherson stepping to the hole. And it won't go. It's set up there on the rim and grabbed down by Smith. Caden Smith with the basketball. McPherson yet to get into the scoring column for the Eagles. This shoot. Guarded closely by Dixon. This shoot dribbles by him. Kicked outside. Caden Smith won't get the shooter's roll that time, and the rebound grabbed down. Outlet pass to A.J. Moody. He spiked it back in bounds, but right to Gabe Mishu. Three on two for the Rams. Cameron couldn't finish it off. Oh, back and forth, but a lot of misses on both ends here. Lindsay to Dixon. A lot of contact down low. Bodies flying every place, but we play on. The windshield wiper game. That's a back and forth action. Claire outside. The Rams will slow it down for a moment. Mishu takes a look around. Hammond into the lane. Off the back iron. And the rebounds. And it's going to be a foul against Carlonis. Gammon stop and pop. Elbow jumper. Couldn't get it to go. Here on the replay, gets up for that, Jay. No good. Rebound, foul action on Carlonis. First foul in the second half. Carlonis, the junior. He'll come out. Attic is Witten, the sophomore, in off Ryan DeShane's bench. Dixon handling the basketball, deferring to Lindsay. Eric Bowen. Moody right in front of us. Lindsay looking for options outside. Three on the way. That's catching the iron. McPherson with that attempt. Hayden Smith back down the floor. Slow start to the second half. LeClaire is pass blocks. Lindsay's on the floor. It's a jump ball on the arrow. Pointing down the floor. A lot of turnovers, a lot of misses here to start this second half. First two minutes here. Rams set to inbound underneath the basket. Just waiting for one of these players to really start getting on track from outside. Cash and LeClaire. Caden Smith travels. Win the basketball. Add to the turnover total. Both teams 
They're disjointed on offense. Tough to find success here in these first two minutes out of the locker room. Somebody's got to settle in and make a shot. Wyndham the hot start in the first quarter. Gorham had that in the second quarter. Neither one. Starting hot here in the third. No points yet. Blake McPherson. Eric Bowen outside. Rudy back to McPherson. McPherson. Nice pass across the paint. Dixon, one chance. Second chance, rejected. That was Gammon who went up and rejected it, and then Dixon committed the foul after he lost the basketball. I said it earlier, Rob. It's big boy basketball around the basket tonight in Portland. As you see, Griffin Gammon gets up huh. and says, not in my house. Here's Tyree James back in the game. Brady Dixon will head to the bench. Issue handling the ball for the Rams. Still a one-point game. Two and a half minutes into the second half. Griffin Gammon. LeClaire outside. Gammon, a three-pointer on the way for Mishu. Yes! Shooter's roll for Mishu. Hits the front rim and snuggles down into the net. Gorham by, th by two on the three-pointer. Now Quinton Lindsay. A.J. Moody, let's see how the Eagles respond. They led from the get-go, but find themselves down by a deuce. McPherson bullies his way in, still won't fall. He's got to be thinking, what do I have to do? He still can't get into the scorebook. A Mishu rolls around, doesn't fall. Mishu's got the rebound. Three for Smith. Giddy up! You see that so many times. One of the best three-pointers is the kick-out three after an offensive rebound. And Caden Smith gets his feet in order and knocks it down solid. Smith just terrorized Wyndham in the regular season. 23 points, six three-pointers. He hit just under 40% from behind the arc over the regular season. And that's a big shot. The offensive rebound, kick out, feet in order. Yes, sir. That's a five-point lead, a 21-point swing in this game. Wyndham led by 16. Today's basketball coverage is made possible by Mainers like Chris Thornton, who supported Maine Public in his estate. His generous gift helps ensure that we can continue to bring these, this annual tournament and showcase athletic achievement across the state. For more information how you can leave a legacy as Chris has done, call Scott at 207-330-4510. This Rams team throughout the postseason, the comeback kids, still a ways to go if they want to take home the gold ball. But they've made another comeback run, climbing out of a deep hole. All of a sudden, Wyndham is searching for some offense, just four points since that explosion in the first quarter. They put up 23 in the first quarter, just four since. It's like someone shut off the spigot. This is a big possession for the Eagles, just to gain some confidence back. Because you're right, it's been a while for them. Tyree James. Bowen behind the arc. He'll reset. Bowen had to find Lindsay. Lindsay trying to get by Gammon, takes on Gammon and wins. Oh, acrobatic shot, Quentin Lindsay. How about the body control there to hang and float and finish? This shoe handing off to Smith. Now work it down the block. Gammon doubled, lost it. Win the basketball. And they found Griffin Gammon down low in the low block. Good hack of hands to knock it away off of Gammon. Add that to the turnover total. Lindsay the senior. Tyree James. Bowen. Took a look at the entire front court. Moody and James, both sophomores. This is A.J. Moody using his speed. He'll go to the line. Through the foul on Caden Smith. Say so when both teams really needed offense tonight, both of them make a concerted effort to dribble drive to the same spot on the floor to their right. Get the angle they want. Try to draw some contact over the line. A.J. Moody will shoot two. This team down three. You can pull them closer. 
Let's see what the sophomore can do with a couple of free throws. Looks like Eric Bowen has some blood on him. Yeah, he's caught a little bit, so he's off. And Matthew Searway, the big senior, is on. Here's Moody. Every free throw, despite there being 11 and a half minutes left in regulation, is huge right now in a game this tight. And Moody hits the first. It'll be a one-point game with a 6-2 sophomore and bury this. And he does. So now Gorham by one with the basketball. Caden Smith, oh, almost stripped. Smith, though, off the iron. Moody on the floor. And a foul called. Uh, Caden Smith with a good look from inside the paint. Couldn't get it. Frustration foul on the rebounding action. Now Wyndham found themselves down by five. All of a sudden, come out of that timeout. They've scored four. Closed it back to one. Get the ball back. Chance to retake the lead. That's the third foul on the Rams here in the third quarter. Tyree James, little daylight. Kicked into the corner. Three on the way. That's off the iron. McPherson still coming up empty. He's trying to shoot through it. He's been so close. LeClaire has the speedy James right with him. Witten take the three. Nice no-look dish. But in a little too deep. Mishu. Mishu with it now. Second chance for the Rams. And a foul called against the Eagles. Gabe Mishu played 32 minutes a game in the regionals. Of course, two games for Gorham, two wins. He does not come off the court. Incredible condition. You saw him throw down that offensive rebound for the Rams. Brady Dixon back in the game for Wyndham. Matthew Searway heads to the bench for Coach Chad Polkinen. Rams basketball up one point. Ashton LeClaire at the elbow, a little fadeaway back iron. There's a rebound for Dixon who just returns. Quentin Lindsay to A.J. Moody. Tyree James. McPherson tried to force that in. It was stolen by Gammon. That passed a little too soon. Didn't allow his teammate there, Dixon, to come open on the cut. Atticus Witten, number zero in the corner. Quentin Lindsay's watching him closely, knowing that Witten, if he gets the chance, will fire it up from deep. Won't get a chance now because that's Gabe Mishu slicing to the hole. 19 points, game high now for Gabe Mishu. Quentin Lindsay. Foul call against the Rams. And that's four on Gorham now. On the next one, if there is one of the next 207, Wyndham will be shooting. Two top scorers for these teams, Ashton LeClaire for Gorham, Blake McPherson for Wyndham. They've combined for two points right now, Rob. Addix Witten picks up the foul. Tyree James stops, ducks, hits, count it. He'll have a chance to tie it at the line. How about the sophomore? The super scintillating, sensational sophomore, Tyree James, works the pivot foot, picks up contact, and somehow finishes from the tough angle with the left hand. I don't know how he made that shot. It seemed like an impossible angle, but the sophomore knocked it down and won. Colton Jewett's trying to get in the game. Right. He checked in. Jeff Mertzel making sure he checked in with the scorer's table. Tyree James has to wait a little bit longer to try to tie this game and lock us up at 34. We are level. 34 apiece. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. A classic brewing here in Portland. Mishu. Brady Dixon giving him the eye. Mishu back outside. Jewett, the rookie. Wanted to penetrate a little more and couldn't do it. LeClaire will. That shot was altered by Dixon, who's got the ball now. Dixon with the Eagles for the lead here. Moody. Trying to throw that into the corner. The Eagles will keep it. Yeah, Wyndham had numbers on that fast break. Passed just a little too far ahead of A.J. Moody. Had to save it. Wyndham fortunate to keep possession here. Quentin Lindsay inbounding the basketball. 
And they caught the Rams unaware. Blake McPherson finishes off the glass. McPherson gets into the scorebook with two. 36-34. The Eagles back in front in this seesaw battle. It's pandemonium in Portland. Broadcast of the Maine State High School Basketball Championships have been made possible by members since 1979. Thank you to the tens of thousands of people who helped make this annual tradition available to fans around the world for free. To show your support for basketball on Maine Public Television, become a member. Head to mainepublic.org and click the big red donate button. And thank you very much. 36-34, Wyndham back on top. That 16-point game with Wyndham in front, that's a memory. McPherson wasn't even expecting that pass. I think he was going across the set of screen. All of a sudden he <laughs> says, oh, look what I found. I'm just going to go ahead and lay this in for my first two points of the game. Well, the Rams were totally unaware of that pass. McPherson slightly less so, but he capitalized after he recovered. And he needed that bucket. That'll prime the pump a bit for him because he's been trying to shoot through a slump. Two points does a lot for your confidence, even in close like that. 90 ticks of the clock to go in the third quarter. Aiden Smith. LeClaire. A Mishu. And a foul called on the Eagles. That's three now on Wyndham, so no shooting situation yet for the Rams. This old triple C matchup. Norman Wyndham. Great rivals for a long time in many sports. First time they've met this late in the postseason ever. LeClaire, work that down to Gammon. Outside, three on the way, Jewett's won't drop. Here's another rebound for Crady Dixon. The SMAA North rebound leader showing his stuff here in this contest. Two point lead with the basketball, under a minute left. Gonna run some clock off here. That's what Lindsay's doing. Game at a virtual standstill. Lindsay now operating with Colton Jewett right there. Lindsay got by the bounce pass underneath. Moody for two. Windham by four. Warm with the basketball. 28 seconds to work. Pass down low. It's dunked. Griffin Gammon and one. Great dump off pass. Griffin Gammon through the contact. You see here, he sets up in the short corner, through contact, and throw it down, big man. Lindsay tried to stop him, only succeeded in picking up the foul. And Gammon, the sophomore, a very good free throw shooter, 76.7% on the season, and make it a one-point game once again. The main basketball rankings gave us some stats, Rob, for the state game, including efficiency rating from the regional tournaments. Griffin Gammon's efficiency rating for the regional tournament was 28. That's incredible. Efficiency rating, basically the good things you do on the court minus the bad things you do on the court. Well, he just did a very good thing. A two-point dunk, the free throw, it's a one-point game. Windham moving to score and get the ball right back. They have the arrow in 15 seconds for Tyree James and the boys to work. Now 10 seconds. Lindsay's directing traffic. James wanted to take it to the hole and did. And he traveled. And it'll give Gorham 2.8 seconds to try to conjure something up before the buzzer. Coach DeShane furiously trying to get his players to set up a play here to get a shot off in three seconds. Here's the heave down the floor. Here's the shot at the buzzer just short. Nifty move, Caden Smith came close. And we've got a one-point game heading to the fourth quarter here in Portland. Win to buy one on Maine Public Television. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Having free college, it's awesome. I'm not going to have to have this weight of debt hanging over my shoulder. It's so nice to be able to not have to worry about that burden. So yeah, sets you up for success. Thanks to Maine Credit Union's Surf Network, I have access to the largest surcharge-free ATM network in the state. Find a Surf ATM at maincreditunions.org. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. 
Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981, with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student-athletes from across Maine. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. Almost everybody standing here in Portland as we get set for the fourth quarter in a tight ball game with a gold ball at stake. Wyndham 38, Gorham 37, and the Eagles have the basketball. So the first quarter was all Wyndham Eagles. The second quarter was all Gorham Rams. The third quarter tied 11-11. Who's going to win the fourth? That's the question. Win the fourth, you probably win the game. Tyree James trying to cut his way inside. A.J. Moody, outstanding defensive player. In a big three in the first half. Lindsay. Back out to reconfigure. Good hit the runner, though. Excellent defense by the Rams. They can take the lead here. Good strong rebound by Gammon, too. Griffin Gammon kicked outside. LeClaire baseline, and the Rams are in front again. Bit of a defensive. Let down there, allowed LeClaire to get to the basket, unimpeded for two. James, can he put his team on top? Well, not with that shot, but he can do it from the line. Tyree James, nine points in the game as the sixth man. Dribble drives, picks up Harm, he'll go to the line for two. LeClaire with the foul. James averaging 11.4 points per game during the regular season. Average 12 points per game in the postseason coming to this contest. And he's locked us up at 39. I mentioned before when he was in the line, he's a very good free throw shooter, 71.4%. And a 30-second timeout called. Six timeouts remaining between the two teams here in the fourth quarter. Have a lot of stoppages strategy-wise. We're going to stop and talk about things here. Coach DeShane and Coach Bokanek. Reminder that all state games are being streamed live and for free at mainpublic.org. You can watch this game or any of the other state final games on your mobile device, computer, smart TV, anywhere you are. That's all at mainpublic.org. That kind of sums up what it's feeling like here inside the Cross Insurance Arena. It was loud from the get-go. An almost sellout crowd. There are not many empty seats, especially on the sides. Even the ends are almost full. And the Wyndham fans have the terrible towels going. Gorham's loud behind us. And Tyree James shooting for an Eagles lead. No, it's tied. Carlonis grabbed the rebound. Issue running the floor. Outside, Caden Smith. Mishu trying to go baseline on McPherson. And a blocking foul called. Kind of too bad as Griffin Gammon buried the three at the end of that, but it won't count. It's always the way, right? That's right. Mishu, as he has all game long, attacks the basket. Kicked out across the other side, but foul first. McPherson called for the foul. Here's a three on the way, off the iron, won't fall. The putback won't go for Carlonis. Eagles basketball. Strong one-handed rebound by Carlonis, couldn't get the putback. Love the games where you're still 6.40 away from the end, but every possession matters. Brady Dixon off the iron. Uh, the pass was just a little low. Dixon had to go down and get it, and when you see that, the shooting percentage plummets. Couldn't make the three ball. Mess up the rhythm of the shooter? Yep. Nisho. Gammon just hit from right there, and the Eagles certainly knew it as Dixon came out to play him immediately. Wyndham sitting in a zone here, one, two, two variety. Mishu split it and hit it. Wow, what a dribble drive by Gabe Mishu right into the teeth of the zone. Lays it up and in over the front rim. Lindsay blocked. It'll stay with the Eagles, though. Big-time players making big-time plays in big-time games. You see Carlonis here defending the dribble drive. Left-hand block. Win the ball. Almost intercepted. Brady Dixon will run this down. Oh, what hustle by Griffin Gammon. But it'll stay with Wyndham. 
Griffin Gammon has amped up his game here in the second half. Getting on the floor, rebounding the ball, throwing down a slam dunk. Tyree James. First in return, the favor. James has it again. James, the crossover dribble. And a foul called against Gabe Michoud. And James comes up limping here. A little contact to that right leg. He's okay. To lose his explosiveness here. You see James go between his legs. Cross over a couple times. Pick up the blocking foul. Moody from NBA range. Boom! A.J. Moody's got the Eagles in front again. His second three. Worked outside. That's blocked. Britton Lindsay got fouled on the way pass by Atticus Witten. May not be a bad foul because Q was off to the races. It slows things down, allows Warren to set their defense. Not a bad foul here, Atticus Witten. You see the previous play. A.J. Moody, splash. Win to buy one in the basketball. Every possession counts. What more can you ask for in a gold ball game between two rivals than a one-point contest coming down the stretch in the fourth quarter? It does not get better than this. Moody just hit that three. LeClaire is watching him closely. Moody, shot won't go. Traveling violation call. That's a right call. Veteran official Jeff Mertzel right there. Johnny on the spot. Now the Rams trying to get their noses back in front once again. The 1-2-2 two, two half-court zone again for Wyndham. Gabe Michoud. Aiden Smith around the screen. They left him open for a moment. LeClaire, too strong. The rebound right down to Michoud. Caden Smith into the corner. Gammon wants it again and hits it again. And this time it counts. Griffin Gammon, three ball, corner pocket. Gorham by two. What's Wyndham's answer? We're about to find out. Crady Dixon stops, steps, hits. Oh, what a step through. Crady Dixon gets two with the left hand. And we're back to tied up. 44 apiece. There's Gammon again. Bullseye. Griffin Gammon feeling it. Listen to this crowd. A sophomore averaging 8.4 points a game. He's just got six points in about 45 seconds. And he's given his Rams a three-point lead. It's deafening in here, Rob. Griffin Gammon stepping up his game here in the second half. He's got 13 points in the game. A couple of huge three balls here in the fourth quarter. An amazing contest here in Portland. If you're just joining us, the Wyndham Eagles had a 16-point lead at the end of the first quarter as we take a look at this three again by Griffin Gammon. Gammon steps into it. Let him cook. And the dueling fan sections. The Rams a little louder right now, but that could change the next 425. This game has had so many twists and turns. It's a winding road. You have the feeling that this is going to have a storybook ending, don't you, Rob? I do have that feeling. That's who we're in store for in the next 425. That may not be enough basketball to decide a winner. Tyree James, his team down three. Dixon, he's put the team on his back here in the fourth quarter. Moody to tie it up. Oh, so close. And the rebound yanked down by Carlonis. Big board for the junior. Halfway down by Moody in the corner. This shoot. Crossover dribble. Couldn't get inside, however. This shoot. Leclerc tried to set him a screen. That didn't work either. Solid defense by the Eagles. They need a stop here. As we're halfway through the fourth quarter. Mishu again. Leclerc was open for a moment underneath. They'll dip dish to outside. Leclerc's got Crady Dixon in his face. Leclerc again spins into the corner. Carlonis doesn't want that shot. Mishu watched by Moody here. 323 to go. One of the longer possessions of this game. We haven't seen too many long ones. 
Wyndham digging in about this defensive possession by the Eagles. LeClaire slicing, no. Lindsay the rebound. Here come the Eagles, who might be able to tie it here. Fed underneath, knocked away. Rams basketball, great play on the floor. Huge play, I think that was Carlonis. It was. Stand in there and knock it away. It was Jack Carlonis. And this is Gabe Mishu off the glass for two. An impossible make by Gabe Mishu falling to the floor. Right hand got it, but he's coming up lame. Tyree for three won't go. Gorham by five and a 30 second timeout called. And yeah, Gabe Mishu was grabbing his right calf. Hopefully for the Rams' sake, it's just tightened up and the trainer can get it loosened for him and get him right back in the game. That's a massive development. Gabe Mishu has been the leader for Gorham. He has 23 points. And again, he usually plays all 32 minutes for Gorham. He typically does not come off the court. Oh, I bet he won't be off for very long. If he can get back in, he'll be back in at his first opportunity. He's getting a rub down on his calves over there. Looks like hopefully just a cramp. And that's what it looks like. They're helping him up. He's going to go right to the scorer's bench and check back in. Caden Smith. Oh, James almost with a quick hands. LeClaire. Into the lane. Through the contact. Travel. Oh, the traveling no, no, violation. No, oh. Sorry. Foul. Player control. Offensive, yep. yep. I was looking for the official to make a signal, and I was, couldn't see Jeff Mertzel, who's surrounded by players. Let's see it here. Yeah, offensive foul just... Initiated contact into Tyree James, displaced the defender. Another huge stop for Wyndham. Wyndham had gone to that half-court zone, one-two-two zone, a couple possessions, just to give Gorham a different look. They've been back into man-to-man -man the last two times down and gotten two huge stops. Here, trying to check back in, wasn't allowed to. Brady Dixon. Five-point gap for the Eagles. McPherson. A great time for him to heat up, and there he is. It's a three-point game. As we got to go under two minutes. Crunch time in Portland. Gabe Mishu. Mishu trying to work on Tyree James. Drew the double. Here's Atticus Witten into the paint. Wyndham only has one team foul. They can be very aggressive here. And they will be. Dixon almost stole it. Mishu has it back. Here he comes. The floater, no good. As McPherson with a rebound. Eagles back quickly. Dixon stops. Good defense by Gammon. Tyree James took a long look. Cuts his way inside and drew the foul. James will go to the line for two. He can make it a one-point game. Another beautiful drive by Tyree James. They're going to him more and more often here with his dribble drive skills. Picks up the harm. He'll go to the stripe for two. He's six for seven at the line so far in this one. These are the two biggest ones by far. And get one more. That was the fifth foul on the Rams. The Eagles will shoot the rest of the way on defensive fouls. As Brendan Terrell mentioned, Wyndham has been in just one foul in this fourth quarter. James hits the second. It's a two-point ball game. 80 seconds remaining. And anyone who's not in foul trouble can be super aggressive here. Mishu, quick shot, doesn't fall. Chance that's that's for, what Gorham needed. Chance for Wyndham to tie or take the lead. Dixon for the tie. Got it! How about that? Confident dribble drive along the baseline by Crady Dixon, and he got two. I uh, quickly erased a five-point deficit, the Eagles did. And a timeout called with 53 seconds to go, and this place is coming unglued. How about this for both coaches right now? Under a minute left. Tie ball game, state championship. Both schools looking for their first ever class double-A gold ball. Dixon to tie it. Left hand. Window. Yes. I mentioned at the start of this game, Chad Polkin and the Wyndham coach and Ryan DeShane's the Gorham coach. Go back a long way. They're good friends. Trying to envision what a conversation a week or so after this game 
over a beverage or two might be like between these two. They have to know they're in a classic right now. Might take a couple weeks to cool down from, from this <laughs> one. Uh, this is high intensity, high emotion, but uh, this is what you do it for right here. For these situations, both coaches with a chance to draw something up here to win a gold ball. And you never know when to be back in this game again. For Gorham, it's been 19 years. Last time they were here, they lost to Camden Hills 66-63. Eagles, they've never been here before. This is the first time. And what a debut for this Wyndham team. We heard A.J. Moody's dad say at halftime, Wyndham's a basketball town. Who would argue that right now? Aren't too many fans on there sitting down right now. Wow. What an atmosphere. And they say the Cross Insurance Arena can't get loud. It's deafening in here. I think I heard what you just said. It's not quite at the level of the old Bangor Auditorium, but it's awfully close. If that's the measuring stick, I'd say it's about 0.8 auditoriums. 0.8 meccas. Oh, yes, 0.8 old barns. Gorham basketball in this tie game. Mishu's back in the contest. Caden Smith back outside. You play for last shot here, try to kill 45 seconds. First good look that opens up. Mishu outside. Hammond didn't want the three. Smith resets with 35 seconds to go. And a foul called against James, but no problem there. That's just a second foul on the Eagles. We're going to make Gorham run a couple inbounds plays here and inbound the ball against denial pressure. 33.8 seconds. You see the time and the score. They deny this really hard because you still have two fouls to give before Gorham shoots. Aiden Smith, difficult task inbound the basketball, but he pulls it off. Michaud, there's another foul. Yep, make him do it again. And that goes against Dixon. 30.6 ticks of the clock. You saw what they did for their last sideline inbound, so they know what to expect here. Again, they can hard deny. Still one more foul to give. Eric Bowen re-enters the game for the Eagles. Tyree James, the very impressive sophomore. He's had a good night tonight. Go offense, defense. Get the double-A North Defensive Player of the Year, Eric Bowen, back onto the court. Clock rolling, 30 seconds. Rams trying to win it at the depth. Over there, arch rivals. Caden Smith, 22 seconds to go. Rams certainly want the last shot now, unless it's a great look. Smith. 14. For all the marbles. It's a crescendo here in the cross arena in Portland. Six seconds. Mishu outside. Smith offline. The rebound knocked away. We need some more basketball. It's fitting, isn't it, Rob? These two rivals. They can't settle this in 32 minutes. They need some more. It's exactly what this game and these two teams deserve. More basketball. More chances to showcase their skills right here in Portland under the bright lights, 49-49 at the end of regulation. That was a pretty good possession. Is out now Jeff Mertzel is calling both head coaches to the center court. I don't know if he wants to give them some overtime reminders or he wants to tell his kids, make sure we're settled down here and playing with sportsmanship. I, I don't know what he's saying here. Having a good long conversation with both head coaches. Well, it's not customary in basketball, I don't think, at uh, overtime to have a coaches meeting. It's not like football where they have to flip a coin. They're both coaches shake hands, go back to their respective huddles, and get ready for four more minutes of action. You see the clock, four minutes has been put up there. And if you're just joining us, Wyndham owned the first quarter. Ran out to a 23-7 lead, 16 points after the first quarter. The Rams came roaring back in the second, and it's been nip and tuck ever since. A good last possession by Gorham. They're able to inbound the ball several times against pressure, able to run the clock completely down and get the last shot. Caden Smith got a pretty good look. It wasn't a great look, but it was a pretty good look for the gold ball. Just barely missed it to the left. And again, the fans raise the decibel level here in Portland. Let's do overtime. We'll jump it up. 
Griffin Gammon in black. He'll represent the Rams, the sophomore. Blake McPherson, the 6'4 senior. He's there in white for the Windham Eagles. Hope these players realize that they're involved in a classic. This game will make some history for each program. Here we go. Eagles basketball off the tip. Lindsey to James. Tyree, tough shot, too strong. Rebounds loose on the floor. Back out to center court, despite the best efforts of Gabe Mishu, will commit the foul. Gravity was working against him, or more so inertia. That was never a physicist. <laughs> One of those. Either way, Gabe Mishu got on the floor. It's just kind of unfortunate there, right into the legs of Quinton Lindsay. You see loose ball from inside the paint squirts out, and Mishu slides about eight feet on the floor, picks up the foul here. And the bonus continues from the fourth quarter, so Lindsay will shoot two. His Eagles are up by one. Lindsay a quick point to the stands. One more big free throw for the six foot senior. No good. It's a one point game, Gorham basketball. Mishu. Calling Carlonis out for the screen. Mishu takes advantage and hits. Fancy footwork by the senior, Gabe Mishu gets the right hand to go. Warren back in front by one. Tyree James. It's Brady Dixon trying to work on Griffin Gammon. McPherson spinning away from Smith. Dixon again. Into the lane, recovered the basketball. McPherson, NBA three, perfect! Blake McPherson held to just four points in the game. Steps up and buries a big three. A massive shot by the 6'4 senior. And now it's the Rams' turn to answer. Mishu. Back into the paint, and he's tied things up at 53. Oh, let him cook, Gabe Mishu, 27. Deja vu. Deja vu all over again, wasn't it? He gets to that right hand time and again. He's a magician getting to that right hand and then finishing 27 points for Gabe Mishu. Brady Dixon to Tyree James. James, that explosive first step, and he got by the defender. Wyndham's on top by two. And a great answer by Tyree James with a dribble drive and finishes with a left hand. These teams leaving everything on the cross arena floor tonight. This is epic. Mishu's hit the last two buckets. And he hit a third one. Worked outside, Caden Smith. Under two to go, halfway through the overtime. Will one be enough? Smith. Who touched that last and went off the ramps. A smart play by Smith there. He knew he couldn't pass to himself or be a travel, so he tried to box out Kyrie James, and it just kind of harmlessly fell out of bounds. He had to watch it. Problem was the teammates, I think, expected that Smith was going to pick that up. They stopped as well. So Wyndham by two with the basketball. Dixon. Gammon and Dixon, a great one-on-one -on -one battle here. A timeout called by the Eagles. 1.25 to go in a two-point game with a gold ball on the line. Brady Dixon called that timeout himself. They've got a couple left. Two timeouts left for both teams now. It's a 30-second timeout, not a full timeout. The referees have just indicated. 85 seconds to go. In the Wyndham huddle, you got to draw up a sideline inbounds play here. And then the set that you want, up by two, minute and a half remaining. Every shot from here on out for Wyndham is going to be a good look. And now it's a full timeout again. I didn't have any 30-second timeouts. So they got to take the entire 60. And the stands are just going to, or the fans are just going to stand up and wave those towels and have a full-throated cheer for this entire 60-second timeout. 
Both sets of fans are bouncing here in Portland. We got Sandstorm on the speakers, and we got Pandemonium in Portland. The Rams still in the huddle. They head back on the floor now. They're down a bucket. Quentin Lindsay's going to inbound the basketball for the Eagles. They're trying to avenge one of their two losses this year. Dixon. Tyree James taking his time. 75 ticks of the clock is all that remains in this first overtime period. Will it be the only overtime period? Dixon. We're now down under a minute. Dixon playing the old Bob Cousy role now, just dribbling and killing time. Like Orange can pick out who they want to foul and put on the line. They're in the bonus. And there's the foul. It's going to be Quentin Lindsay to shoot. And he almost had that steal from behind. Just got a piece of the arm. And the moment is not too big for Quentin Lindsay. He's excited to head to that line. The minute the foul was called, he was celebrating. And he get a chance to make this a two-possession game if he can connect twice. He shot two foul shots already in overtime. Made one of two. Is that five on Mitchell? Looks like he fell out. It is. Out. He's out. You can't believe so it. So loud in here, we can't hear the announcements. <laughs> One more for Lindsay. It's and gonna it'll be a one possession game. Exactly what I was thinking. And this one's huge. And neither one fell. The doors open a little more for the Rams. To get back on top, they can tie or take the lead in this possession. Two to tie, three to take the lead. Almost knocked away by Freddie Dixon. It was knocked away, but will stay with the Rams. A timeout taken here. Coach Desheen didn't love to look at that possession. Calls a timeout here. Again, going to set up a sideline inbound. And then their best set here, down by two. 38 seconds left, gold ball on the line. One timeout remaining for Gorham. Two timeouts left for Wyndham. The Rams have the possession arrow in their favor. 38.2 seconds to go. We'll see if that plays in any role in the conclusion of this game. Teams, Every are, teams are so close. And no surprise that this game has been this close. It's really been one for the ages here tonight in Portland. I think all the fans here with their hearts in their throat right now. Unless some of the neutrals from the earlier game, Jefferson Staggs fans, stuck around. They probably don't have a preference on who wins this one. But everybody here, Rams or Eagles fans, for the best of interest. The pressure is high. The tension is mounted. 38.2 seconds to go. And it's Gorham basketball down two points. Wyndham with their biggest defensive possession of the year. Gorham with their biggest offensive possession of the year. And it's it all comes. come down to this. Carlonis inbounds. Smith. Lost it. Uh oh. Picked up. Brady Dixon ahead. Tyree. It won't count. It won't count. Intentional foul. They call the intentional foul first. So that means the Eagles don't get the basket, but they do shoot twice. And they'll get the ball right back. Let's see it again. So we get the intentional foul. Yeah, see, he grabbed He pushed uh, him push. after he made the pass, trying to foul him. And Jeff Mertz was right there with the call. Colton Jewett, the rookie, called for the intentional foul. And a chance for Crady Dixon, who's been so good tonight, to launch his team forward toward their first gold ball. And they'll get another one. Three straight misses for Wyndham. Haven't put this one away yet. That one falls. 
It's a three-point game. Eagles basketball, 31.8 seconds to go. And a timeout taken by Chad Palkin, and he's got one left now. Nope. 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 I take that back. Referee just pointed which way the ball was going. Thought a timeout was called as he pointed to the bench. My mistake. Clock running at 30 seconds. Jewett's fouled. Tyree James, this may not be the guy you want at the line. If you're a Gorham Rams fan. And they had no choice. James is seven for nine at the foul line in this one. Look at the Wyndham fans. Two shots for Tyree James. Sophomore came in on the bench and he has added so much. And he's made it a two possession game. That's the big one. Get the lead up to four. James looking to do some further damage to the Gorham Rams chances. And does. Now it's a timeout call. Full timeout taken by Chad Polkinen. He's got one left now. And as the Eagles can feel it, up five with 27.5 seconds remaining. That coach to Shane. I tell his players it's not over yet. And we need a quick basket here. And we can use our last timeout to set up our defense in full court variety. There's still 27 seconds left here. Let's execute. Ryan DeShane's team has been comeback kids all year, but most of those comebacks were getting down early as they did tonight. They roared back in this game, forced overtime. Do they have one more epic comeback in them? It would certainly be one for the ages if they can cut off this five-point deficit with 27.5 seconds to go. Each team going to have one timeout remaining over these last 27 seconds. Gorham doesn't get a bucket on this possession. Probably not going to matter. Uh, they need it. It's desperation time for the Rams. And they can't waste any time. They need a basket, and they need to hurry. They have to start all the way under their own bucket. And there's some pressure coming from the Eagles. Carlonis to Jewett. He's hurrying. Colton Jewett takes it all the way in. And, and he scores, and a foul called as well. Wow, we fouled him from behind. AJ like Mooney. Looked, looked like, yeah, it looked like they were going to let him just make that layup and still keep their three-point lead. Instead, Moody, with a soft challenge from behind, hits him right on the head. Yep. And one. That could change things if Colton Jewett, the rookie, what a big moment for the freshman at the line. It won't go. Dixon the rebound, and they foul Tyree James again. Uh, James is shaken up. Yeah, he hit his head when he fell. Yeah, his teammates need to scrape him off the floor here. And He's having a hard time Moody getting up. Is bear hugging him to get him up off the floor. Still holding the back of his head. You know, in a situation like this, if he is unable to continue, what uh, options does Chad Pulkin have as far as someone shooting? Yeah, he can choose any bench player to come in if he is medically unable to continue. So yeah. It looks like he's going to be able to shoot these foul shots. He's going to shake it off. Every shot on the line, bigger and bigger for Tyree James. One out of two last time. Of course, the Gorham miss means he really just needs one of these. And he's Mr. Reliable at the stripe, isn't he? He sure is. Steps in there, knocks down a big one. Back to a two-possession game. A knock on the head doesn't bother Tyree at all. Five-point game. Time running out on the Rams. They have got to hurry here. It will be a miracle comeback. There's a three for Smith. He got it. It's not over yet. A two-point game. Don't go anywhere yet, folks. The Rams still have a pulse. They're able to take a timeout here. They're able to set their defense. They're down by just two. So obviously you want to try to steal the inbounds pass. And if not, quick foul. Wyndham will walk back down, shoot two more shots. But, you know, you have a chance to keep it a one possession game. Quick foul. And if you foul, you hope you can foul someone other than Tyree James. Here's that three from Caden Smith. 
See Smith picks up the ball screen. Moody's hand in his face. Doesn't matter. Knocks it down stiff. Restoring hope for the Rams. A two-point game. 10.8 seconds to go. And it goes from quiet to loud in a heartbeat. Fans take the floor. The teams rather take the floor, and the fans rise. Wyndham needs their press breaker here. Got to get organized. Quentin Lindsay inbounding the basketball for Wyndham. He finds the open man, Moody. It's a two-on-one, but Moody will take his time and get bear-hugged and tackled. And He's lost his, yeah, it looked bad. But he, I know, yeah, it wasn't. He kind of tripped over his own feet. Yep. He got bear-hugged and tackled because the defender, Carlonis, I think it is, or is it Smith, just lost his footing. We'll see it here. So it's, he has him wrapped up, and yep. then he just kind of trips over his, his own feet. And, it looked like he was trying yeah. to hold himself up on the opposing player. Yeah, both players on the floor, give each other five. Yep. We see Moody stretching out the opponent. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's stretching out the opponent. Talk about no hard feelings. He says, hey, you got a cramp, big guy. Now he's helping him up. They both realized that was not intentional. Yep. You saw that right there, and A.J. Moody shook his head and said, I know. It did look bad at first, you're right. And then you saw the players go down, and you kind of realized what was happening there. That Caden Smith was just trying to maintain his balance, and then his weight took both players to the floor. Okay, they had each other in a bear hug, and their feet got tangled up. So now Moody needs to refocus. He goes to the line, ahead by just two here. He needs both. Both will probably win a gold ball for the Eagles. One out of two. The Rams have hope to tie. Missed them both. Well, game on to the last 8.6. Quorum has no timeouts, though. Wow. No hesitation at all, A.J. Moody. As cool as the other side of the pillow. Moody is confident. This for a gold ball, most likely. Got it. And now the Eagles can feel it. And Gorham's uphill climb became almost vertical. A.J. Moody gets taken to the floor. He helps up the opponent in a display of sportsmanship. He has to refocus, walks to the line, and oh, just calmly knocks down two for a gold ball. You don't always see players help each other out. I don't think I've seen a player stretch another player out in quite some time. But to do it in overtime of a gold ball game, that just shows the respect between these two programs and the players on the floor. So those two kids have probably been playing against each other since they were in first and second grade in, in different youth sports. And you love to see that sportsmanship, and you love to see A.J. Moody step up in a big situation and knock down two. Bitter rivals with tons of respect for each other. One of the Rams have left. They'll need to pull a rabbit out of their hat for sure. And they have very little time to do it, as you see. 8.6 seconds to go in overtime. It'll be hands-off defense by the Eagles, no doubt. Colton Jewett back outside. Smith for three, short. The rebound. Dixon throws it ahead. The Eagles celebrate! That's what it looks like to win your first ever gold ball in school history. Congratulations to the Wyndham Eagles and coach Chad Polkinen. Soak it in. Enjoy it, fellas. This is a night of a lifetime. It's a moment the boys in white will never forget. But down at the other end, heartbreak for the Gorham Rams. Wow, that one had a little something and everything. They had a 16-point comeback for Gorham. They had Wyndham showing some bite at the end of the game. It had an overtime period. It had clutch free throws by a sophomore in overtime. And A.J. Moody, another sophomore, sealing the deal at the line. The Wyndham Eagles, 2024 Class AA state champs. Their first foray into a finals game ends in success. Wyndham was 8 for 12 from the foul line in overtime to clinch this victory. Free throws win games. 
or lose them. In this case, a victory. Wow, what a scene. What a game. What a night. Just take a look around you and soak it in. I hope the players are doing this. And the DJ's got Sweet Caroline going. You can hear him singing. The Wyndham fans are feeling so good. And Tyree James hasn't stopped bouncing, and why not? The sophomore came in off the bench, an integral part of this Eagles win. And now they'll climb the ladders. Scissors in hand. Something the Wyndham fans have never seen their boys basketball team do. Not till now. We got to experience this last year watching the Brewer Witches do the same thing with their first championship. We saw it earlier today with the Brunswick Dragons girls. And now Wyndham has joined that exclusive club. I mentioned Tyree James coming in off the bench. He had 17 points for Wyndham, had just six at halftime, 11 in the second half in overtime, and on the game he was 11 for 13 at the foul line. That's clutch. Clutch doesn't go far enough to describe that, especially when you look at a crowd of well, 5,000 people. The Civic Center seats about 6,200, and there weren't many empty seats even down to the end behind the baskets. Grayson Freeze, the junior, up to take his turn with the Shears. And I love this ceremony because every player, whether you played in this game or not, gets to take a piece. Because even if you didn't play in this game, you still play a massive role every day in practice. Absolutely. State championship team, you need those guys every single day, whether they play in the game or not. It's hard to prepare for a team like the Gorham Rams. Unless you've got quality players giving their all in practice every single day. And they may not have gotten into this game, but they have earned every step up that ladder. Brady Dixon. The junior comes down. Noah Maines, a senior. Jan Vren making his way up the ladder. He's number five, a 6'3 junior. He'll be back to defend this Wyndham title next year. I think the players sometimes just want to savor the moment on that ladder. Sometimes I think the shears are a little dull. Sometimes I think they just want to stay up there a little longer and just freeze the moment. Make each sensation last a little bit longer. AJ Moody celebrating. There goes Tyree James up the ladder. The two sophomores. A simultaneous climb. Quentin Lindsay up there. He's going to finish the job, it looks like. Down to the other end, the two sophomores, Moody and James. They've almost got the net off the rim as well. Moody and James are ready. You see him right here, ready to wave it. They're just waiting for their senior, Quentin Lindsay. Look at some sharper scissors. He's got the net down, I think. He does. Look at the smile. Look at the jubilation. Look at these two sharing it. 
The two sophomores sharing the golden moment. And as good as that must feel for the players, the best still yet to come here in the postgame for the Wyndham Eagles. I don't think you could cap a main basketball season any better than the Eagles and the Rams just did. What a cherry on top. Main high school basketball, 23-24. Wow, great day of basketball here in Portland. That was the best. Over on that bench, though, they would not agree. And that's mm -hmm. the tough part to see, the dejection of a team like the Gorham Rams, who played so well tonight, deserving of a gold ball, but as Clint Eastwood said in Unforgiven, deserves, got nothing to do with it. The it's a cruel of game sometime. Uh, absolutely, the ecstasy of victory and the agony of defeat. That's how it works. Now we'll send it over to the house, Mike, for our trophy ceremony and honor both these teams. On behalf of the Maine Principals Association and where Butler Building Supplies, congratulations to both teams on their exceptional championship level play throughout the 2024 tournament. We hope that the memories you made this season and over the past two weeks of the tournament last a lifetime. As you all think back to your tournament experience with your teammates, coaches, families, and friends, may you take with you the pride in your efforts on the court. You have represented yourselves, your communities, and Maine basketball well. For the seniors on both teams, thank you. Thank you for all of your leadership throughout your high school basketball careers. We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Representing the Maine Principals Association are Eric Curtis, Athletic Administrator from Bonnie Eagle High School, and Michael Daly, Athletic Administrator from Deering High School, and representing Ware Butler Building Supply is Mike Finney, manager of Ware Butler Gorham. To begin the award presentation, I would ask head coach Ryan DeShane of Gorham High School with his assistant coaches, Greg Morton, Chris Crosby, and Russ Willett to come forward and assist with the presentation of awards. We'll begin with the managers, Caleb Reed. <laughs> Lucas Willett. Freshman, Colton Jewett. Watch out, Colton. Preston Brown. Sophomore, Atticus Witten. Juniors, Jack Carlonis. Griffin Gammon. Seniors, Isaac Young. Gabe Michu. Caden Smith. Jesse James. Hayden Pelletier. Taylor Farr. And Ashton LeClaire. On behalf of the Maine Principals Association and Ware Butler Building Supply, it is our pleasure to present the runners-up plaque for the 2024 Maine Class AA State Boys Basketball Championships to Gorham High School. Congratulations.
And now to present the awards to your 2024 Maine Class AA State Basketball Champions of Wyndham High School. I would ask head coach Chad Bulkinen of Wyndham High School and his assistants, George McCrillis, Jeff Grigsby, and Noah Esty to come forward to assist with the presentations. Manager, Paolo Ventura. Freshman, Colin Janvrin. Sophomores, Adrian Moody. And Tyree James. Juniors, Joseph Blige. Connor Janverin. Grant Kopey. Brayson Freeze. Crady Dixon. And seniors, Quinton Lindsay. Eric Bowen. Ryan Smythe. Noah Maines. Benny Ninziza. Matthew Searway. and Blake McPherson. At this time, we'd ask Coach Pulkin and come to come forward to accept the game ball. And would the p captains please come forward. On behalf of the Maine Principals Association and Ware Butler Building Supply, it is our pleasure to present the state championship for the 2024 Maine Class AA Boys State Basketball Championships to Wyndham High School. Congratulations, enjoy celebrating your state championship. The Maine Principals Association, Ware Butler Building Supply, and the Maine Bureau of Highway Safety remind you that to celebrate your achievements, you must get home safely. Don't drive distracted. That goal ball feeling is nothing like a goal ball feeling when it was your first one in school history. It's even greater. Times like this, I envy Greg Levinsky. He's on the floor soaking in the atmosphere. We'll check in with him next. We come back to the Civic Center here in Portland on Maine Public Television. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Five County Credit Union, serving members since 1956, committed to delivering convenience through technology, branch access, and local service. Sheridan Construction, a main company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Hammond Lumber Company, with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. The environment is just awesome. Great campus, small, close-knit community. Everyone's really welcoming. Everything feels very personal. You feel like you belong here. We're not going to waste any time. Greg Levinsky is right in the middle of the Wyndham Eagles celebration. Let's send it to him on the floor. Yes, I am right here with the Wyndham Eagles, the state champion Wyndham Eagles. Eric Bowen, you're holding the ball. Yeah, here we 
It's been quite a journey for this team. How would you describe the emotions that you're feeling right now? I mean, this is what dreams are made of, right? We Overtime game, state championship. Like, this is what we dreamed of forever, and these guys got it done. Where's Cree Dixon? Cree Dixon, right come here. here. You had the busted lip a couple of games ago. Yeah. Just a grinder, right? Uh, and that's kind of the identity of this team. When did you guys last year, you lose or you win five games? This year, you're state champs. What's the difference and what's the turnaround come from? We're just all family, all the work we put in the offseason, all all the work throughout the season got us here. Yeah. Sure. All right, Blake McPherson. Yep. Another battle with Gorm. You guys lost by 27 in the regular season, but today you're the champs. Why is that? You know, we, we had some... Um, we had some exposure that we needed to um, go through, and you know it kind of came into us. But you know we handled it our way, and we got the dub. So it's all that matters. All right, coach, let's bring you in here. You've been the coach of this team for almost a decade. Yeah. It's the first time that they've gone this far. Yeah. Why this group, and why now? Uh, you know, I, I asked. Uh, I think I asked Bowen if I was dreaming on the bench. Uh, these guys are just. Um, unbelievable competitors, relentless competitors, relentless friends. They're, they're, they're great on the court, they're great off the court. I know a lot of people counted us out in going into this game, uh, rightfully so with how we played against them the first time, but if you watch these guys play all year, they never give up. They never give up, they always fight. Uh, and tonight we were down, we came back, got it into overtime, and I, and I was never in doubt with these guys behind me. All right. best, best basketball team we've ever had in Wyndham. All right, Wyndham Eagles, let the people at home know how it feels to be state champ. That's how it feels to be state champs, the Wyndham Eagles, 62-58, and what a great way to close out the 2024 basketball season. That's the sad part. It's, it's over. But that's what dreams are made of. Eric Bowen said it and said it well. He's going to remember this night for the rest of his life. And they certainly will. The Eagles state champs for the first time, their first foray into a gold ball game, and they get the job done, 62-58. They had to squaw and scrape, but they did it. Well, that'll do it for our broadcast tonight. I want to thank my broadcast partner, Brandon Terrell. The captain, Nick Godfrey, doing all the production back in the truck for Maine Public Broadcasting. And the entire Maine Public Broadcasting crew here in Portland. My name is Rob Kennedy saying so long for the 2024 basketball season. The Wyndham Eagles, your boys, double-A state champs. Thanks for watching on Maine Public Television.